Hi everyone and welcome to my time-lapsed version of this beautiful chestnut coloured horse. I've been meaning to do a horse demo for ages so I hope that you enjoy seeing this speeded up version. If you like this then do check out my other content here on my YouTube channel and as always please do subscribe as that really helps to show me some support here. Also on my Patreon channel I'll be releasing the full length tutorial from this one that you can paint along with. And I have tons of other content over on Patreon in real time if you would like to learn more about Soft Pastel. I'll add links in the description below, but I hope that you enjoy this. So I decided to keep the background really simple with this one because it's really just as a demo that I was doing this for my patrons. They've been asking for a horse demo for ages now. And I took the opportunity to work on lovely Charlie here, who uh, is a member of my family at home. Uh, my mum rescued Charlie and my niece uh, looks after him in a local stable. So he's had a lucky escape from a previous life and now lives in the lap of luxury. So it was a great opportunity. He's got a beautiful face. A good opportunity to work on something that's this tricky collection of brown colours because chestnut coloured animals are always quite tricky to depict. And for this piece I used only my unison animal 36 set. So if you've got that set, which I know that many of you have, uh, you'll be able to work along with me quite easily. And I found that I had all the right colours that I needed in that set, not a problem. I did make sure when I designed that palette of colours that I really thought about chestnut brown animals because it's something that I get asked to paint quite often, whether it's a horse or a red setter or some types of spaniel dogs. You do come across this lovely uh, tone of animal quite often and it takes a lot of different brown tones to create it. It's not a case of just putting down one colour. It really gets affected by light and that's why I chose strong sunlight as my demonstration because it really changes this colour whether you're looking at it in the light or in the shade. So that's something that I talk about lots throughout this demonstration. But just like with anything else, working from the dark tones up through the mid-tones to the final highlights, the trickiest part is choosing the right colours to use as highlights, for example, because you don't want to go too bright with those. And that's something that I show you in the demonstration as well, just how to choose the right colours and how to analyse that in your photo reference. And as I mentioned already, this is just the time-lapse version. So this is six hours, roughly, uh, speeded up into eight or nine minutes. And I will release that full series over on Patreon. I've got three parts to release, each one two hours long. And that means that you can work along with me in real time. And I've chatted the whole time that I was painting him, so you get to hear my entire thought process as I'm working. You also get to hear a few sound effects from my studio, like cats jumping in the middle of my pastel boxes at one point. But that is just part of the joy of filming. So I really enjoyed working on Charlie. I love to paint horses. I don't get asked to paint quite as many horses as I do dogs, for example. I think I tend to get more dog commissions than anything else and I love that but I do love to get something different to work on as well and occasionally I'll get a, a cat or a horse or some other animal and it's always such a treat to work on something different. So as we come round the side of the horse you can see that the light source is really coming from in front of the horse. It's hitting him straight on the front of the face. 
So as we come round towards the, the neck area, there's a lot more shadow around here. Again, building up the colours and the texture from the dark tones first. Then starting to come in with a selection of those lovely warm browns that are in the animal set. Until finally using a mid-tone, um, it's my, one of the brown earths actually from the set, so I don't even go as bright as white or anything close to white for the highlights. And then using a bit of pastel pencil just to come in and really refine the marks more. So the trickiest part of any animal that has quite a smooth coat is to create that texture that looks smooth but also get some definition within the fur too. So I always find that fine smooth coats are the hardest to depict because you need to make the smallest marks to create that type of fur. So laying down all of the initial layers of colour using the pastel sticks and then coming in with a selection of pastel pencils just to neaten and refine towards the end. And that's usually how I like to work, using the vibrance and the strength of colour that you get from the pastel sticks. And it's mostly unison pastels that I use. And then really making use of the pastel pencils for when I need extremely fine detail. So the final part was creating all of the leather work on top of the face. I really tried to make it look like the, the veins and the different structural elements of the horse continued underneath these leather straps. And then it was really quite satisfying to add all of these little straps over the top. It really just brought the whole thing together. So this is all within the full length version, which is just about to be released on my Patreon channel. So for as little as four euro or four dollars per month, you can gain access to this full tutorial and all of my other tutorials as well. But this is a super in-depth tutorial if you're interested in painting horses and I hope that you'll check it out. So I didn't really need a sheet of paper on this part of the leather straps because I could anchor or lean my hand just outside of the painting. Just a moment ago there when I had the paper over half of my, my painting, it was so that I could lean my hand and not smudge any of the work that I've already done. So there are always ways to get around the nature of pastel which is quite smudgy and easily blended. Some artists also like to use a mal stick to lean their hand on, but sometimes I'll just tape a little bit of paper over the area where I want to lean. So lots of neat tricks in this piece to share with you. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing it come together here, this speeded up version. But I really hope that you'll go and check out the full length version and paint along with me. If you do paint along with me, then please do share it and tag me in it. I would love to see all of your versions of Charlie the Horse. So I'll add those links in the description below where you can go and find the full length version. Thanks very much for watching this. And until next time, happy pastling.
If you have enjoyed this and you'd like to learn more about Soft Pastel with me, you can now check out my full tutorials library on my website, emmacolbertart.com. Here I have my full catalogue of tutorials nicely organised so that my patrons can find exactly what they're looking for, but also so that new members can have a quick browse before you sign up. So I hope that I'll see you over there and that I can share even more soft pastel techniques with you.